Hi guys, so today we are going to be going through the basics of horns. So I'm just going to go through the very basic ones. Okay, first up are these. I made these to go with my Carrie cosplay from Taz. They are very light, they're attached to a headband um, and just because I had run out of time I've actually just added some scales on um, just to, to blend it in with her hair a little bit more. Um, so these are made with this. Now this is a air drying clay. It is very very light and it dries to the consistency of foam. Um, so as you can see from that one, you can shape it and I can, the problem is they are quite brittle so you've got to be very careful with them, but you can actually break it and inside you can see it's sort of dried like foam. Um, so you do have to be quite careful with these but they are quite durable as long as you don't knock them around too much. Um, so what you can do is you can um, mould it up into a shape or any particular shape you want so that was a, a narrower horn. I decided it wasn't keen on the look of those so I've gone with a slightly more curvy one. Okay, and um, then you can sort of uh, primer it with like either um, normal primer or like wood glue or anything you particularly use for general priming um, and then let it dry, you can paint it up um, and then once you're finished either a Mod Podge or sort of like a spray lacquer just to keep the paint for, uh, staying where it needs to be. Um, I can open it if you like, give it a, a little play around. Um, this is actually very cheap, it's like one, a pound for a packet. So, as you can see, it's a bit, it's very strange. It's, um, I wouldn't know how to describe it, it's a bit like a marshmallow. Um, yeah, it's very light, very mouldable, uh, very flexible. Uh, you can sausage it up, you can do all sorts, so um, I'm just going to craft a couple of things that I can then use to paint up and stuff. So I'm probably going to be using this for my titling horns actually. Um, for Jester from Critical Role. So. It's not going to be enough, but I'm not going to do my full ones here. Um, the easiest way to do it is to make a base. You can then cut it down however long you need it to be. But as you can see, it's flexible. It will stay where you want it to stay. You can sort of etch designs into it if you like. If you want to attach it to a headband, your best bet would be just to put the headband through it or use the centre to wrap into the headband first, um, otherwise you might find it slightly more difficult to attach to things. But if you make a mistake, you just play around with it really. Um, it's easy to use, it's cheap. It's effective um, and it's also because it's so light it's not going to give you like a headache or anything if you're going to have them on all day. Um, the only downside is trying to get it to stay whilst it sets. Um, it does take, let's have a look, it does take a couple of hours comes in different colours if you aren't particularly keen on painting. Um, it's got even a mixing guide so you can mix it up to make different colours. Um, I do like this stuff. I think it's it's really good for people who are just sort of getting started. So you 
can also just use normal clay tools. Which the downside is it will have imprints of things, but um, you can use clay tools to score it or to help mould it. So I'm just putting some little lines in it. Side of it being so squidgy is that you can leave fingerprints in it so you've got to be careful not to jam your fingers through it as you're shaping it. Um, it will lose its shape a little bit as you work but again because it's so soft and malleable it's easy enough to pop into the right position again. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've just made a hole in the bottom to go through and I'm going to leave it to dry and I can paint it up at one of the cons we go to. Um, so yeah, that's how these were made. Um, if you're beginning in horns and stuff, or even if you're not, if you just don't have a lot of time to spare, then these are very quick and very easy to make. Next up we have Toriel's. Again, these are on headband. Uh, these are made from upholstery foam. I covered them in pipe cleaners to get the raised effect, and then the whole thing is covered in warbler. So they very durable. Uh, they're not brittle. They're not going to break. They're slightly heavier than the other ones, but they are solid boys. So this is the type of foam I used inside. It is upholstery foam. Um, I got it from Hobbycraft. Um, but there are various other places you can get it. It's squishy, it's lightweight, um, and all you do is you grab some scissors and start chopping into into it. Now, you can always draw on um, the kind of shape you want if you want something slightly more unusual. For now. A basic shape. Okay. So I've got a basic shape there, and then what you do is you just sort of round it off by cutting into the corners. It is very messy. This will get stuck to everything. You'll be finding it in the house for days. Okay, so we have the rough shape. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. If you're going to cover it in something, then that'll hide any any flaws that you do have, as long as it's sort of roughly the right shape. Okay, um, so you don't have to use warbler. You can use, uh, there's another thermo thermoplastic called Thebra, which I haven't tried, but I have friends who have, and they said it's still very good, uh, very similar. Um, with those... I basically used pipe cleaners to get the um, goat effect going on. So just twist them around to make it a bit thicker. Because it's a sort of cone shaped, it can be slightly tricky to do. Um, it's trial and error, really. Never throw away your scraps of warbler. Um, they can be heated and used to make like decoration. You can sort of heat it, roll it up. Um, if you wanted to add more detailing onto that, you can you heat it up, roll it up, and then instead of using that bit, you could just add 
the trim that way on top of the warbler because it sticks to itself. Okay, so always take precautions when using heat gun. You want a heat proof mat. Just make sure you don't um, stick your hand on it or anything. I've done that. The warbler itself will get quite hot, so be mindful of that. And this, if you heat it up, can start to burn. So again, be very careful when you're using it. We do have a Warbler 101 if you want to learn more on um, how to use Warbler. So it's obviously gone floppy and as it cools down it starts to harden up again. Because it, um, goat's horns have a natural texture I'm going to use that side and then you just kind of wrap it around. My scrap might not be big, big enough but you get the general idea. Um, so I've put the join at the back. just carefully apply more heat and just keep moulding so as you can see the lines from the um, As you can see, I'm sort of getting the shape of the pipe cleaners coming through. It is very hot, so be very careful when you do this. Um, sometimes you do get folds and stuff, but you can sort of manipulate it to work itself out. But these are some very rough horns. Obviously, <laughs> if you want to do them properly, you're going to spend a bit more time on them than I am. As you can see there, when this heats up, it'll start to burn. So just be very careful that you don't overheat it. Um, if you've got metal work like the uh, inside the piping, it's going to get very hot very quickly. So again, just be very careful when you're doing this. So um, you can sort of heat it up and mould the joint out. Sometimes it involves sticking your fingers up underneath to sort of mould it out. But if you look at that one, you can s vaguely see the seam along there. But once you've sort of worked at it for a while, it's not really very visible. Again, the seam was along there. I just kind of stuck my fingers under and gently started to mould it so you can mould the seam and then it will slowly work itself out but it will take a while you can spend more time on it than I'm going to but there you go that's the general shape of it and when it's, it's hardened up you can then prime it um, again, like the um, foam horns, you can use things like um, wood glue, you can use primer, um, like primer paint, um, anything that you're comfortable working with, really. Okay, so number two. Okay, so the last one that I did, and these are actually... <laughs> Ironically, the first ones that I made is uh, Loki Taunt. Now these, I'm be careful of the heat gun, these are solid, well, um, they are, let me show you, inside, they are hollow inside. So with these, I got some um, just normal clay, I moulded the horns um, to the shape that I wanted, then I melted warbler over it. So I did it in two halves and then put the halves together and spent ages um, 
filler in the gaps, you can still see the seam along there slightly. But yeah, I used um, things like poly filler in the gaps, I used a lot of primer, I did a lot of sanding, and eventually got, I mean, the hollow inside, but it's still quite heavy because I hadn't at that point worked out that you could use things like foam to make it a lot lighter. Um, this is actually <laughs> triple thickness of warbler because I, again, I wasn't sure on how to do it. Um, so with this I used uh, the scraps of warbler, heated it up and again did the little detailing and then um, so that's again how you could technically use the detailing all around to make patterns on the horns, you could make uh, spirals, you could do all sorts. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that one because it's a lot more time demanding, but it is something you can do. If you particularly wanted quite long horns or perhaps something that needs a bit more stability, you can actually create a base using wire. Um, I would recommend garden wire as opposed to something like jewellery wire or um, or anything like that because it's a lot thicker however all I have to hand is pipe cleaners um, so I'll show you the basics of it but you are going to want something more stable than pipe cleaner to create a shape um, and what you do is you bend the wire to the shape that you want it and then you can build on top um, so if you wanted, um, so you can get uh, sort of demon horns that curl all the way around, almost like ram horns. Um, so which is something I'm going to be doing for Jester next year. Um, what I would do is start off with a wire base. Uh, you can either then build on top with the air dry clay foam, um, and that would help it keep its shape. Or you can do what I know Xanth does, which is use um, foil to pad it out. And because foil is uh, it's cheap, it's lightweight, and it will help keep the shape. And then you would build on top of it. And the good thing about this is you can sort of build up to bulk it out a bit. So if you want it bulkier at the bottom, you just build up more around the bottom. So you can see it's bulkier at the bottom, thinner at the top. If my camera focuses, there we go. And then you can just bend it into the shape that you want. If you're going to do something like ram's horns or tiefling horns, you need to get yourself a stable structure. Um, so having the wire inside of it will obviously help. Um, you want to strike a balance between stability and weight as well. So warbler is very good for stability, but it can get quite heavy quite fast. So that is something to consider when you are making them. Um, with the air dry clay it is very light but it also can be a bit brittle so you might find that it snaps so it's just finding that balance that's good for you so i'm just going to demonstrate putting a little piece of warmer over unfortunately i don't have a full sheet to demonstrate 
Um, however, when I make my titling horns for Jester, I will make a video for you guys. Um. Okay, so similar as the last ones, you just wrap it round and try and shape it. It's obviously going to take a lot more to get it smooth just because this is quite a hard surface. Um, so if you want a particularly smooth one, you're possibly better off trying to smooth this out a bit before you put on the wobbler. Um, So very similar in principle to the um, upholstery foam one, and then you just primer it and paint it, and then um, add like a lacquer or mod podge or something just to keep the paint in place. Okay, well that's Horns 101. We have gone from the easy to use air dry clay to the slightly di more difficult uh, upholstery foam and warbler to the very structured um, wire and foil to just simply warbler on its own. Um, if you want any more tutorials on how to make more advanced things, uh, how to perhaps um, create scaling and detailing, or even perhaps how to use uh, magnets to uh, apply them to your wig directly rather than using the um, hairband method, then give us a, a shout in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. So thank you very much. Bye.